that one percent of my brain's like this is poison you're gonna die hey everyone welcome back to my channel my name is evan i created this channel to talk to you about all things entailing traveling and travel nursing and give you guys my experiences and insights on what it was like to travel nurse and what it'll be like going back into travel nursing again. I used to work full-time traveling or as a full-time travel nurse as a floor nurse and then re-specialized into the operating room and I'm now going back out into the travel nursing realm but only in the operating room. Never going back to floor nursing, don't even ask. I am excited for that. We are leaving this Thursday. So by the time you see this video, we will be on our way to our next assignment. Sneaky tidbit for you. I'll make an announcement next week on where we're going. And also thank you for giving me the week off last week. I know all 30 of you are just like at the edge of your seats wondering what the hell I was doing. I'm so excited I'm back to talk to you again this week. I have been using that week to think about the hell I even wanna talk about this week. Today I basically want to reminisce or relive or recap times of our, my traveling experience prior to this one coming up. If you don't know, go ahead and watch, I think it's my intro video, especially my first traveling assignment video. I'll link both of them here. I get to travel with my husband. I met him as a floor nurse. We obviously hit it off, we got married, but that means we got to travel nurse together and we get to travel nurse together now. And we're both re-specialized in the operating room, so it's a win-win-win for us. Yay us. Our anniversary is coming up. I need to get him something. If you have any ideas on first year wedding anniversary gifts, let me know. Anyways, I was trying to think of how I can go down memory lane, bring you back with me on our traveling assignments and like the highlights of it. The best way I could think of is honestly just going through my computer. As I'm already looking through these, I'm like, oh man, this could be a long one. I like them all and I'm sure no one's like, yes, let's sit down and look through your scrapbook. I'll start with Georgia because Georgia, and again, I'll link it again. I'll link it definitely for sure somewhere in here that you should go check out, especially if you're interested in travel nursing. Um, our first assignment was in Brunswick, Georgia. We thankfully got to cram our three days, our 12, our three 12s, our three 12 hour days, oh my God, together so that our four days off we're together and we got to explore. This being our first assignment, we were like, yes, four days off, see all the things. We went to Savannah, Georgia twice. Once whenever the in-laws came up to visit and we showed them around, but the first time we went by ourselves and we definitely did like all the touristy things. But nonetheless, it was still like an awesome city to go visit. And we went during St. Patty's Day, which I don't know if you know about this, and I definitely didn't know about this, but Savannah, Georgia, goes balls out on St. Patty's Day. Every fountain is green, not the whole dang river is green, but like they party freaking hard. And not that we're like big partiers, but we are big people watchers. And that was like the best form of entertainment. We got our freaking green beer finally, but I just wanted a dang green beer. I just wanted it. I knew it wasn't gonna taste different, but I just wanted it and I got it. We finally got it. Did it live up to the hype? No but it was still cool to do. <laughs> Beautiful um, architecture and cathedrals, and um, it was right off of, oh, my geography is bad. Oh, anyways, it's just the Savannah River. That's anticlimactic. Other things we really enjoyed about Georgia is that a lot of the, like I mentioned earlier, the architecture, just the historical architecture was preserved really well. So we could go back and look at mansions from the 1800s. We could go see um, all kinds of things that we were, we'd take tours all the time and really want to just learn what the hell happened down in the good old South. And it turns out it was not the good old South as we know, but it further confirmed it. So we got to see tons of alligators. There were gators in our little apartment complex pond all the time. I don't have a picture of it, but I have videos and pictures of, we walked around Cumberland Island. If you ever are in that area, go to Cumberland Island. There's wild horses everywhere. Uh, you take a ferry on the way over. I think we walked like 20 something miles around the entire freaking island, but loved it. Driftwood. Yeah, it's like Driftwood Island. I don't know if that's the actual name or is it Jekyll? St. Simons, we went there, 
like bi-weekly. It was only a 15 minute drive to St. Simons Island, but you could rent bikes and ride around the entire island. We also got to go on a coastal tour for our anniversary. We found a tour guide, just went around the entire island and caught all kinds of different fish. One of them that I didn't know existed, of course, Todd is like very big into fishing. And here it is. It's called like a sheep's head fish and they have teeth that look like human teeth and it kind of like messes with your head a little bit of like is this right it's just a fish you put it back anyways but it was kind of weird our next assignment was in lewiston idaho which is a part of i think hell's canyon we went in the peak of summer and usually idaho is fairly like cool dry but in hell's canyon it was like a 20 degree difference um, so we often tried to find ways to like stay cool, but also active outside. And the biggest thing that comes to mind and how we tried to do that was we still had to drive hours south to um, Riggins, Idaho. I'm already looking through these and it makes me smile. We did whitewater rafting, which I never thought I would do in my life because I am a chicken when it comes to heights, water, slippery things like i'll try i'll try them but like am i gonna be nervous the entire time yes but it was so much fun like as long as you dig your little toes in underneath the seats and hold on for dear life you shouldn't get flown from this unless you intentionally want to get flown from this but we didn't thankfully so fun and you meet all kinds of interesting people especially the guides for whitewater rafting like this is their lives and they love it they love it to the fullest and they have all kinds of stories for you and you'll probably be a part of their stories for the next time they go out and do this later that day or even the following season. I think our guide's name was Jimmy and he was missing his front tooth because I don't know if you've ever been whitewater rafting but you have oars to paddle whenever you're not rushing through the rapids. And so this guy was telling us a story that um, the demonstration of how to use oars and making sure that your hand covers the top part of it so that when you're freaking the hell out during the rapids and only holding on with one hand, that hammer-like piece to the end of the oar doesn't come back and knock your tooth out. He's like, like me. Anyways, he often went to nearby mountains because again, I didn't know this existed. I, I mean, I've heard of huckleberries. I had never tasted them before. And someone at work was really nice enough to bring me like a little sandwich baggies worth, which now in retrospect, just giving a stranger a sandwich baggie worth of huckleberries is like, you are a saint. Those things are expensive. They're hard to find. They taste so delicious, you don't wanna share them with anyone. So thank you for introducing me to huckleberries. So we would go to nearby mountains to try and huckleberry pick ourselves and that made me nervous because I was like I am not an expert in berry picking so looking for berries and just like I am 99% sure that this is a huckleberry that 1% of my brain's like this is poison you're gonna die so we ended up finding a spot that grew huckleberries and they grow only on like one side of the mountain at a certain elevation in a certain time frame of the year and that's why they're also so expensive they're just so short-lived but we found some and we were like yes we got maybe another sandwich baggie worth of huckleberries and man oh man did i like i didn't think we would be so the word i didn't think we would be so particular in spacing out our huckleberry consumption because we knew how hard it was to find them and pick them and keep them. We did that. But another thing that grows very well in Idaho and Washington and Oregon is um, just that whole like Pacific Northwest-ish mountainous area is blackberries. And blackberries would grow on the side of a freaking bike path, just like whoosh, walls of it. So six foot four husband of mine, while I was at work one day, decided to ride his bike down one of the paths and take a couple gallon baggies and came back with gallon baggies worth of blackberries. I'm like, holy crap, where did you get all these? He's like, they're just on this side of the road. I love that, that it was just like so casually grown and that we were the suckers just picking them fighting thorns and hornets trying to get blackberries and all the locals are like 
and y'all are stupid. Other things we did to keep cool in Idaho. We went down, yeah, like a jet tour. We went down a jet tour down um, Hell's Canyon's river. It went all the way into Oregon. It was a long trek, but it was so cool because we got to stop halfway through at a orchard of someone's property that opened it up for these tours specifically. For the first time we went, it was an apple orchard and they gave us like this beautiful lunch and it was a picnic and the water was so dang gorgeous and warm and perfect. Like I, I brought home pockets of rocks, like river rocks, because I just couldn't believe the colors I was seeing naturally in this river. And so I brought home a shit ton of rocks, but it was just like such a beautiful experience. Second time we went, we went to like a fig orchard, which to pick figs off of a tree and not get charged an arm and a leg was like, Wah. of course I'm gonna eat all the figs I can. Oh my God, it was so cool. It was so worth it. And there was all kinds of paintings from thousands of years ago in sides of mountains. And we found a lake in the midst of the mountains that had like bald eagles flying in and like the dirt road was like this big and it was terrifying as hell to get there. But if you got there, this lake is gorgeous and we went kayaking through it and we saw moose we saw elk we saw owls we saw like all kinds of critters and creatures that are super fun to look at oh and uh mule deer mule deer were everywhere the last place i want to talk to you about or like reminisce on was can i help you you don't walk across my laptop why do cats like walking across laptops please let me know how to stop this the last place I want to talk to you about is, was our last assignment actually before coming into the OR was in Eugene, Oregon. And our goal is to go back to the Pacific Northwest permanently. I'm going to say that loosely because I know life happens and things change, but our goal is to end up back there someday because it made this much of an impact on us. It is my favorite place for multiple reasons, but I guess I'll start off with the most obvious is that Todd and I got engaged there. And I guess in a different video, I can talk to you guys about like our story, but in a nutshell, we got engaged there and um, we went on a hike that was supposed to be a, what's it called? That was supposed to be a cross country skiing area, meaning that the snow was like up to our thighs or hips or my hips, Todd's thighs. The snow is so deep and it was supposed to be a hike and we go hiking all the time. And so we went on this hike and I am thinking it's a normal day and we brought picnic stuff. And so we get to this lookout point, which in, now I know was not Todd's plan, but like it worked out so perfectly and so beautifully. It overlooks a beautiful lake and there are just winter wonderland trees surrounding us coated in snow and there are birds chirping. It's like a damn Disney movie. Of course, I didn't put this all into perspective until Todd gets down on one knee and asks me to be his wife. And then all of a sudden, I don't remember a thing. And I say yes, I think, or of course, or something to that degree. Probably why I'm so biased on this place. But also we enjoyed our time in Eugene because it was a college town and being the young 20 somethings and wanting to try new things, a college town was like a perfect happy medium of big city feeling in a small town. So our living situation was 15 minutes outside of this busy city feeling. So it was like a good medium of we can retreat away to be by ourselves and then also drive an hour to go hiking and drive a different hour to go snowboarding. And we could go to the coast if we wanted to, or we could go to Washington if we wanted to. We go to California if we wanted to. Like it was just like, the perfect medium of all things. And we went there during the winter too. And like now after living in Colorado, going to a winter in Oregon was like, not a big deal, it's a breeze. But we went on so many hikes, like hike and sisters. That was, I don't know, maybe, I think it was like 17 miles. Like it was a pretty long hike, but it was all a gradual incline with views everywhere and different hikes with um, natural waterfalls snowboarding. I went snowboarding for the first time in my life at, I think I was 24. And Todd grew up snowboarding. So I tried my best. And of course, Todd being the teacher that he is was like, let's go on the moderate blue trails. And I was like, I ate it. I ate it just about every two feet, the entire base of the mountain down. It was fun in retrospect in the moment. I was like, this 
hurts. I'm cold. I wanna go home. <laughs> and then I did it again like an idiot, like a couple weeks later. Oh, and in Oregon, we met some other friends and couples that we still talk to and still keep up with. And coincidentally are also, well, one of them is in the operating room and one of them works in PACU now, I believe. That's what I really enjoy about travel nursing is making these connections with people I never would have attempted to reach out to just like as being strangers on the street kind of a deal. Like I, I love that I get to be thrown in these circumstances and learn what everyone's cultures are like and habits are like. Things I can pick up from every little part of the country instead of just staying in one little spot. Like that's my favorite part. And so I can't wait to go out to this next area and see people live their lives and what memories I can create from there. Yeah. So I, I'm just taking a selfish week of looking back on my scrapbook and showing you my scrapbook unwillingly, probably. I'm seeing if I'm missing anything. If not, I'll pull it up on Instagram or something. Ooh, speaking of Instagram, you should find me and check me out on Instagram. My handle is Operation Evan, just like it is in this channel here. I post as often as I can. It used to be frequently and now it's turning into whenever I can, but hopefully it picks back up into more frequently whenever we get to our next destination. Here I take polls to see what you guys wanna see. If you wanna see different things, if you have ideas that I haven't brought up yet or haven't even talked about yet, that's the place to find me. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I'm here every Thursday. So if you're interested in things that I've mentioned today, if you're interested in seeing how life pans out for me, where we go next, hint, hint, hint. I plan on a whole week's worth of vlog footage on our trek out to our next destination and what it looks like loading up our car. We're only taking one car, by the way. One car for two people and a cat is gonna be a cramped car, but I will try my best to show you how we are jamming everything in there, but also how to live minimally for what we're doing and what we chose to do. You don't have to agree with what we chose to do, but it's just what worked for us. So if you're interested in that, stick around for next week's video. I'll see you guys next week.